Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Subhanallah. Ramadan is just a few days away. Who's ready for Ramadan? Let's welcome today Dr. Noura Warabi to uh, talk more about Ramadan and the preparation for Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Noura. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. How are you today? Alhamdulillah, I'm very good. Good, good, alhamdulillah. So, are you ready for Ramadan? I I was actually surprised by how time is flying by very fast. Yeah, subhanallah. Yeah. Only a few days. And Ramadan is yeah, few days. Yeah. So, how can we get the most of these few days, ayyam and madudat? Uh, for, for Ramadan, it's a month full of blessings in terms of uh, spirituality, in terms of our health. And today we're going to focus on how we can make the most out of our Ramadan in terms of, um, or the health aspect. Um, but before we talk about fasting and how fasting benefits our bodies, it is very important to note that uh, fasting is not the same as dieting. Now, the concept can be a little bit confusing because fasting, you are restricting food and dieting, you are also restricting food, but the secret relies uh, within the purpose of each. Usually the purpose of dieting is to fix a health problem, looking and feeling better, but fasting is there to help you feel and look better as well as to live and perceive differently. Uh, today we'll, we, we will go into details about fasting, the miracles of fasting, and how it can be rewarding for our bodies, our health. Um, fasting has been if you look at fasting it has been very important in so many different cultures and so many different religions and we hear about a lot of different types um, of fasting for example if we look at different religious fasting there is the yom kippur for jewish uh, for us we have ramadan there's also our christian brothers and sisters where they do not have um, animal products uh, yeah, Oh, you who believe observing uh, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you. So the bottom line here uh, of any fast, uh, whether even if people do fast like social media fast or fast that is not talking to people, whatever type of fasting that people do, whether religious or not, the bottom line of fasting is to get rid of any addiction that is causing a buildup of toxins in your body, your mind, and in your spirituality or your spirit. So medical research has uh, proven that fasting has so many benefits to our bodies. Um, it helps us with weight loss, insulin sensitivity, speeds up metabolism, promotes longevity, improves brain function, and so on. It, it, the counting never stops. But how does fasting do that? And the most confusing question that a lot of uh, Muslims face is not even water. <laughs> so we're gonna answer that question as a start uh, before we get into any other question that uh, you might have. But uh, when we are fasting normally, uh, we are giving our organs a break. So during that break, the, the body takes advantage to, or even like every organ takes advantage to start cleansing itself on its own. So when the body's uh, blood circulation um, used to focus before on the digestive system, 30% of that uh, blood uh, is going into our digestive system. Now that 30% and that energy is spread all over our body. So we are supposed to have more energy we're supposed to be more uh, mentally alert have more concentration and we should be more productive unfortunately uh, a lot of people feel tired feel lazy or even feel angry uh, there is an explanation for all of that uh, but for the most most part people are either not eating too well or they're not regulating their sleep time very well or they are having withdrawal symptoms but those feelings they have is not because of uh, they are fasting. Okay. Um, the the other thing I wanted to touch on before we get into the question is not even water. <laughs> As we mentioned before, there are so many different types of fast, uh, and and the the most or what people think is common sense is if I am not eating food for a long period of time, then I probably need water to help my body get rid of the toxins to flush them out, right? Um, but what happens actually, um, 
for fasting, for, for us, we when we fast from dawn to sunset or what we call the dry fast, where you don't have water or food for a long period of time, what happens is you actually put your body under a competition and anything that's mold, fungus, bacteria, viruses, germs, whatever, you name it, whatever is living inside your body that's hurting you needs to live in a water environment so it can stay alive and survive, right? So when you ta take the water out off of the equation, now the body goes into a whole competition where the body needs to survive. And of course, in that competition, your body wins. And that's how the cleansing process is actually intensified. Um, research have, have said that if you have been collecting toxins, let's say for one year, you need another year to clean all of these toxins. And they have um, summarized this ratio as one to one. But when you are fasting, it doesn't matter which type of fast you do, and it doesn't matter, or, and it depends on how effective you have done the fasting. That ratio can change from one to three, or it can change from one up to 100 um, in terms of how much you can cleanse. Um, there is another uh, other research that speaks about the cells and how our bodies build uh, new cells. Um, let's say someone has been um, living unhealthy lifestyle for 20 years. Researchers said that in order for your body to completely get rid of all the old habits and completely renew all the cells in your body, it will take your body uh, three years of living a healthy lifestyle to completely build and have new body and new cells. But when you are fasting, you're actually condensing all of this into three months. Can you imagine? So at well, three fasting years to has three months. From three years to three months, yeah. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, so fasting has uh, amazing benefits to our bodies. And it's very important that we do not only fast, we do not only um, cut water, we cut food, but the secret is when we break our fast, which um, we will talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before starting the fast, now during these days, few days before Ramadan, what should we do to like kind of saying train our body for the fasting? Hmm. Okay, so th there are important things that we need to consider uh, for fasting. For first, a very good question is how do you enter a fast? How during the fast, how do you maintain your physical activity, your sleep time? and how do you break the fast every day and then once once the month of ramadan is done how do you exit out of that fast all of these factors play an important role into uh, having a very effective fast and coming out with a completely rejuvenated body mind and soul so what the, there are a lot of tips and tricks that we naturally do in our sunnah but we really don't pay attention and one of them is when we fast before ramadan uh, and after Ramadan, when you have Sha'ban, for example, and it's encouraged that we start fasting. And this is sort of our our uh, way or a way of our religion telling us start warming up, so mm -hmm. you do not really have a huge withdrawal symptoms when you start fasting. A huge mistake a lot of people do before Ramadan starts is they have a huge feast uh, the day before. <laughs> The day before they actually start fasting and this is a huge mistake because you are putting your body under a big shock where you mm -hmm. have had a huge feast the night before and then the next day you are completely cutting food out so that's a big shock for the body but our son is teaching us how to slowly progress into going into the fast going into the month of ramadan so what should we do how can we do it first of all intention is very important you start with your intention uh, of fasting. So this is like your niya, of course. You start with that. And then when you start taking action, uh, going into the month of Ramadan, you need to start slowly uh, eating less portions and adding more food that are more liquidy, like soups mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, and salads. And um, all of these fried foods, maybe start to eliminate it slowly. Fast foods, try not to <laughs> come close to it. So gradually, this is how we are supposed to enter the month of Ramadan instead of shocking the system all of a sudden. And also, this is the same way that we should exit 
the months of Ramadan. And this is where we have our six days of Shawwal. And uh, so just Mondays, basically Thursdays. our Sunnah. Yeah, uh, Mondays and Thursdays, uh, that's a different story. Um, for for fasting, there are two types. So you have the the long period fast, which is the full month. And right. usually that's done over um, an intense period of time. Uh, and it's supposed to be from 29 to 30 days. And then this is like the complete, let's say like a spring, uh, spring cleaning type of thing. And the rest of the year, you're supposed to maintain that cleaning. And that's when we have the Monday and Thursday fast. And we have our three days uh, in the middle of the month. And now we hear a lot about intermittent fasting. Um, it's, it's so unfortunate to see that most of the research that is being done about fasting is done by the West when mm -hmm. we already have the secret. We have the yeah. secret to fasting. We have the secret to health. SubhanAllah. And that's why the yeah. Prophet ﷺ said, Fast and you exactly. will get healthier. SubhanAllah. Yes. Uh, people who are addicted to caffeine, what should mm. they do before Ramadan? Uh, people who are addicted to caffeine, uh, first of all, like we said, they need to start working on lessening the amounts before mm -hmm. the uh, before the month, so their body does not have a big shock and uh, they have really heavy withdrawal symptoms. And another thing they can do is manage their time of caffeine intake. So, for example, if they want to have caffeine after their iftar, it is best for them to. Uh, avoid having it at suhoor time because that will dehydrate their body and it will be a hard time for them to fast during the day so it's best for them to have it maybe after isha prayer after taraweeh or like have a a good gap before suhoor so they can have liquids um caffeine can dehydrate the body very much uh excellent uh, advice uh what would you like to say for people who take ramadan as a month of uh, dieting so it's just a mm. month so we can lose weight mm. so first thing we need to know that is our human body is made uh, by god to fast we are not meant to be eating all the time um for, so people of the book like we said uh, oh you who believe uh yeah fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so uh, people of the book or the monotheistic religion have fasting why because all the rituals uh that god has commanded us whether it is uh of course first it, it is to get closer to god but it's also there to maintain our health, whether it's prayers, whether it's fasting, whether it's zakat, you name it. And they all support our seven dimensions of health, which is our physical, emotional, mental, occupational, and then the circle goes on. So uh, when we talk about fasting and health, uh, like we said, we have the two types of fasting, the long period and we have the short period, and it's supposed to help you cleanse rejuvenate your cells, get your, get, help your body get rid of any toxins that have been building up. And then you have the two, uh, two days fasting Thursday uh, and Monday is to maintain that. Um, so, uh, so for people who are thinking about uh, food, uh, the less amount of food that goes into your body is better than any medication um and a lot of studies have mentioned that the beautiful thing is that most studies like i said are not published by muslims in 2016 a, a japanese scientist actually found um autophagy autophagy is the process where the body eats itself uh, or it eats whatever is not supposed to be there and he found that fasting 29 to 30 days can prevent cancer the less calories that goes into the body, the body starts to change its strategy. So the body starts to work so it can survive. Uh, what happens is that any cancerous cells, any weak cells, any dead cells, or even cells, uh, which is very fascinating, um, cells in the body, if, if a cell feels like it doesn't have any purpose, it just shuts down. So the body also get rid of those cells that shut down. Uh, our bodies are fascinating, subhanAllah. So fasting helps to clean up all of these and use those uh, uh, the the dead cells. You uh, somehow uh, 
as an energy for the body. Um, each person has no less than 1 million calories stored as fat. And this is the reason why humans can survive for 40 days without food. So do not worry about um, weight loss. Do not worry about uh, food, uh, starving, whatever you name it, whatever worry you have, don't worry. Just make sure you do the proper way of fasting because the body will automatically do the job that it has to do. Our problem is not fasting, <laughs> but our problem is how we break the fast anyone can starve themselves but the minute they want to break their fast they just go on a feast mode and they just want to eat everything um as a small uh note about sumo wrestlers uh, the way they actually gain their weight uh, they have of course they have their own like special training but what they do is that they fast for 11 hours and they have special healthy meals, not any meals, not fast food, not none of that, not fried stuff. They have very specific meals and in big amounts, and they're supposed to eat as fast as they can um, in order for them to gain the shape uh, that they have. And this is exactly similar oh. to, um, <laughs> this is very similar to what we do <laughs> when we break our fast. Um, so according to the Japanese scientist, when he was talking about the right process for autophagy to happen and the body cleanses itself, he puts four rules, okay? So the first rule is fasting 29 to 30 days. And during the fast, the person needs to be active, not sleeping, that's what most people do, unfortunately. And we noticed that in, in um, uh, our prophet, peace be upon him, most of his battles happen during Ramadan. So he was very active and you are supposed to have a lot more energy when you are fasting and you are supposed to be a lot more alert and focused when you are fasting. Um, like like we said, if you are feeling tired, it's either because you're having sugar and caffeine withdrawal symptoms um, or maybe your uh, messed up sleep time is irritating you or it can be an emotional detox when people actually get angry and in that instant, people need to learn how to deal with that by prayer. And this is why we say Allahumma nisa'im. Uh, of course, we, we're, we're talking about the health aspect. We're not talking about the spiritual aspect over here. Uh, the third rule he said is to take enough sleep and you need six hours of sleep. And finally, the fasting cannot be less than eight hours per day. So um, according to the Japanese scientists, which we all have all of these rules, but we just need to apply it uh, mm -hmm. properly. So if anyone is worried about weight, don't worry. Just follow the right steps and your body will know what to do on its own and you will be surprised with the results. And of course, we should not do it only for the health benefits because so we have to do it intentionally and to have it for the sake of Allah mm -hmm. so we can get rewarded inshallah another sunnah inshallah. that we have to talk about is the uh, suhoor so how mm. important is the suhoor uh, suhoor is very important especially for people who keep asking a lot about uh, there's a lot of blessings in suhoor and there are a lot of people who care about weight loss again and they would skip suhoor and then they wait until iftar or after iftar and then they would want to exercise people who uh, skip suhoor actually end up losing a lot of muscle mass even if they are exercising even if they are eating the right stuff but because their body have gone through a, a long period of hunger it will start eating itself in in a way that it, it will lose a lot of muscle mass and we do not want that to happen during the month of ramadan we want to lose the fat not the muscles that's one two there's a huge wisdom uh why if you look at our prayer time for example uh the time difference between uh, fajr prayer to duhr is much 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 bigger gap than that between duhr to asr and then the gap got closer or smaller and smaller as we get to isha time and then we always, like, you have to rush, oh my God, I missed uh, my prayer, it's just a short time. And there is a huge wisdom because in the morning, we need all of that time to finish our work, um, to have our, whatever errands we have to run or do. And in order for you to do that, you need your suhoor. 
and also in the regular days you need your breakfast without that you are missing a lot with your um, metabolism and a lot of uh, physiological processes in your body and you're also not supporting your hormone function so make sure that you have your suhoor so it can give you all the energy that you need to carry on with your day and just to keep your body running in the in the right manner and uh, what do you advise people to take for suhoor? Some people uh, have kharuf mahshi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, for suhoor, actually, what we need to focus on um, water. Water and staying hydrated is very important. Um, Coffee. Try people to are stay addicted to uh, coffee. Coffee, stay away. Yeah, stay away from caffeine. Maybe what is mm -hmm. allowed is uh, you can have uh, what do you call it? Tea instead. Tea. The caffeine is has a uh, and the tea is not as bad as the uh, the the coffee <laughs> caffeine, and it doesn't dehydrate you in the same manner. Uh, mm -hmm. Stay away from um, stay away from anything that has sugar in it. Uh, sugar is the cancer cell's best friend and it drops your immunity and messes up your body. You should not only in Ramadan, but even in a regular day, try your best um, to stay away from uh, sugar. Uh, you can have any other substitute like honey, uh, honey and avocados for iftar are amazing. Uh, oats, oats and walnuts with some cinnamon and fruits are excellent. Um, what else? Eggs are very good, but stay away from fast foods. Anything that's pastry um, that w will, or anything that is fried, and that will make you thirsty and will also increase the acid in your stomach and mm -hmm. give you discomfort. Like croissant, like pies, cheese pies, yeah, atar yeah, pie, all these. Yeah. So stay away from those, and of course, caffeine. If you need to have caffeine, have it during iftar, not during suhoor. It can dehydrate you. Um, tea is okay, Dates. like we said. Dates, yeah, dates are very good. Dried, dried fruits are very good as well. And uh, usually, for we, water, we, water we take and, uh, mm. amradin. Mm. Sugary drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Try to stay away from sugary drinks. We call them the Ramadan drinks. There is nothing uh -huh. called a Ramadan drink except for water, and that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this will take us into. Uh, the the way we should be breaking our fast uh which is the the, the secret um mm -hmm. and the whole process of of fasting um anyone can fast but only the wise knows how to break their fast so we start with water and dates why dates because dates have glucose and fructose and according to research these are the two best nutrients for the brain after fasting so they will mm -hmm. help to lessen any headaches any hunger it will help uh, the person to calm down and it will also stimulate the stomach to produce digestive enzymes dates have fibers and those fibers will help uh, prevent the sudden rise in the sugar levels so your body does not crash and will slowly warm up uh, so do not start breaking your fast with bimto with pepsi or any sugary drinks those are not ramadan drinks <laughs> water is and we made from water everything live yeah so if you are if you were to drink every day one cup so people who care about their weight listen to this very carefully if you were to drink every day one cup of a sugary drink you will end up with three kilograms by the end of ramadan wow. added to your weight only from that one cup if you were to have it every day so we have well, it when as you a gain culture. weight after Especially back yeah, home, people so, like every day, kharnoub, jaleb, no, kut, no, not yeah, only one cup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, there is nothing called like a Ramadan drink, only water is, that's it. And the mechanism of having a sugary drink will leave your body into asking for more and feeling hungry. And at that moment, the body is, is just thirsty. So the sugar level will rise up all of a sudden if you have those drinks. And the brain will send signals into the pancreas and will be asking for more. And at that point, you will be feeling like you're really hungry. You will eat more. And the more you eat, you feel there is something missing. You haven't really got what you need. And you just keep on eating until you cannot move. <laughs> 
So um, the limit store for carbs in our body never exceeds uh, 350 uh, grams in the form of glycogen. And it will go up to 30 um, uh, kg for athletes in muscles and liver. But uh, it, if you exceed that limit, it will be stored in your stomach as fat, as weight gain. So be careful with those drinks. Um, so. Uh, message number one, do not look, if, if you care about weight and weight loss a lot, do not look at scale, look at your waist uh, right. and use a measurement tape. Uh, if you fast properly, by the end of Ramadan, you should be close to four k kilograms less. Uh, message number two is the, the sports or training you do before iftar will increase your, your metabolism it will uh, save your muscle mass and if you lose muscles then you will not be able to burn um, calories as much because muscles are your burning engine um, this is why people who lose weight the first two weeks of ramadan without doing any physical activity they're actually losing muscle mass and liquids from their body. And usually those people, um, right after Ramadan, just watch three to four days after Ramadan, the weight of that person will gain it again. And they're like, oh my God, what happened? And at that point- <laughs> That was not my plan. What happened? <laughs> no, that was not the plan. So, yeah. the, and the worst part is that the, that person have lost muscle mass. Mm -hmm. And when they gain their weight again, they're actually gaining fat. So that's a disaster, and this is not what you want. Mm -hmm. So, so people who are used to uh, train before Ramadan, they should not stop training. No, they should not stop. And even people, if they want to start, we'll talk about that for training. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, the the proper way for breaking our fast is having our dates and water, and then we need to take a break, get up, and do your prayer. Mm -hmm. Your stomach needs fifteen to twenty minutes to be ready uh, for for digestive enzymes to be released. So that's your warm up for your digestion. I noticed this and when there's... I was in the in the Gulf. I used to live and I lived in Qatar and Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so usually there, uh, people break the fast with dates and water and like very light things, and then they go to the mm -hmm. mosque for prayer. So it's it's about fifteen to twenty minutes to, yeah. to come back, and then they start. Yeah. And also even uh, another drink that you can have is yogurt. Yogurt is very good because it has the bacteria that will support your digestion as well. Um, there's also something very interesting about prayer time. Uh, like we said, the, the, the gaps between all of them is just fascinating. And it works uh, with how your hormones are supposed to be regulated. So follow the sunnah, follow it. Uh, you're not missing out on anything. If, if Now science is coming now with a lot of things that support every single thing that our prophet have Allah. taught us so follow awesome. yeah follow the sunnah mm. okay so going back to the exercising and training oh training so um some people feel lazy <laughs> and they just uh say that they're tired whatnot but we have a lot of football players who fast and they still train they're professional athletes like benzema mo salah and many others and we have seen, if, if you look at their history, we have seen them uh, fast during World Cup and very big games. And they usually have their own program. But let's talk about, I'm saying, I'm mentioning them because I just want to show people there is no excuse. You can do it. Of course. Uh, but let's, yeah, but let's talk about normal people like us. Uh, what is physical activity? Physical activity is anything that makes my muscles, even if I move my hands now, this is physical activity. But physical activity is any uh, movement that makes my muscles and my skeletal system move. And it leads to burning calories compared to rest time. So any movement I do is physical activity. Unfortunately, most people, especially after Asr prayer, are sleeping. Uh, first of all, the best time to sleep for uh, people who are not suffering from any chronic disease like diabetes, blood pressure, best time uh, for them is um, to exercise. For, for those people, best time to exercise is after iftar. If you don't have any health issues, you can either exercise after iftar or after tarawih. And or you can exercise one to two hours before iftar time. 
what kind of activities you can do you can do cardio like walking cycling swimming or yoga for 30 to 60 minutes and if you are someone who have never done exercising before and you want to start exercising this ramadan um, start by dividing your 30 minutes along the day so for example you can do 10 minutes um, after your fajr and then you can do 10 minutes after asr and maybe 10 minutes after tarawih and you can do that uh, for the first week to get your body ready and then the next week you can do like a full on 30 to 60 minute before um, iftar time this should help you keep your muscle mass keep your body moving your cir circulation and maintaining your physical health uh, keep it at moderate intensity um, yeah and also for people who want to exercise after iftar or after tarawih uh, just remember there is no exercise on a full stomach just give it like one to two hours and then you can exercise the problem is tarawih uh, finishes around 11 30 12 ish yeah. so when we go back uh so i, I think yeah it's uh it's feasible before uh, iftar and i think as you said it's the best time to do it like two hours before mm. iftar yeah yeah hopefully i will add it to my ramadan schedule <laughs> inshallah um i'm just checking if we have any questions from the audience Water. How can we stay dehydrated during Ramadan and be fast for that much hours okay. without drinking any water? Uh, how can we stay hydrated? That's a very good question. Hydrated, yeah. Uh, usually, usually people during suhoor they will just like chug on the water, <laughs> and please don't. <laughs> just make sure you divide. We'll talk about this in more details. Um, you're not your body does not store water and you're not a camel not okay. a camel <laughs> um yeah uh so the amount of water that my body needs or that can handle uh is half or the amount of water that my digestive system can handle is half a liter a liter uh, the full amount that the stomach can take is um the, the full amount of liquid that my stomach can take is one liter and a half but according to our sunnah, uh, what the Prophet have taught us, بحسب ابن آدم أكلاتن يقمن الصلبة فإن كان لا محال فثلث لطعامه وثلث لشرابه وثلث لنفسه That means a third for your food, a third for your drink, and a third for your breath. What does that mean? We said that, mathematics, we said that the, the capacity of your stomach is one liter and a half. That means the amount of water that your body handles at that moment is half a liter. Um, after that, 60 to 90 minutes, the kidneys will get rid of that water. So to make sure that you are hydrated during your fasting, what I can do is I can take one glass of water uh, when I start my iftar, and then I can get up and pray. Then I can have my soups. Um, that's also liquid. And then after a short prayer, you can have another drink, even if it's tea that also counts as a liquid into your body. For suhoor, when you wake up, you can take quarter a liter of water before you start eating your suhoor. And then after you finish your suhoor, you can have another quarter of liter, uh, quarter liter of water. So that's half, half, and that's the capacity of your uh, stomach, adding uh, the food and adding a little bit of space so that you do not um, congest your digestion or congest your stomach and give it a hard time digesting food uh, if that is clear um, yeah so this will keep your body hydrated you will be okay and you should be able to tell when you go to the bathroom if if you go to the bathroom and the color is a little bit yellow or dark yellow then you need to watch out uh, and try to stick to your uh, uh, a plan how you spread uh, the, the the drinks you have between suhoor and uh, between iftar and suhoor time. Excellent. You have mentioned before yeah. that uh, some people feel tired due to bad habits. One of them is irregular sleep mm. time. How can we yeah. manage 
the sleeping time schedule during Ramadan? Um, all the physiological processes during the day, whether it's Ramadan or it's not Ramadan, um, are, uh, I don't want to say damaging, but their body is being used. And the growth hormones or rebuilding hormones, they only work at nighttime and we are, when we are sleeping. Now, during Ramadan, it is not uh, normal that we do not sleep or that we sleep less right because we have to pray we have our suhoor we have our rituals to do but god will make it up to you so <laughs> if i am staying up late praying reading quran taraweeh tahajjud you name it your melatonin or hormones that improves your immunity will be released and that hormone prevents cancerous cells that bring um it brings good health produces and it's usually produced in the front part of your brain so let's take the scenario. If you have two brothers in the same house, one is praying and one is staying up, playing video games, watching TV, whatever, you name it. The person who is watching TV or playing games, his cortisol uh, is being produced in his body. He's already staying up late. The body is not happy. And he's um, stimulating stress from whatever he's watching and listening or playing so ad an adrenaline is being released and having all of these is anxiety and stress uh, as opposed to melatonin now if you are staying up praying and uh, uh read the quran whatever it is what is being produced because of relaxing activity is melatonin it will help you feel relaxed and happy and also th those people who stay up uh uh, late to pray, they got a bonus. And away from normal days, actually, uh, the hormone melatonin get produced from two extra places. So God is also rewarding you, even if you are not uh, sleeping and the, the normal biological processes are happening. Now you get to have melatonin being produced from your stomach lining and from your eyes as well. عيناني لا تمسهما النار عين بكت من خشية الله وعين باتت تسهر في سبيل الله There are two eyes that shall not be touched by the fire an eye that wept from the fear of Allah and an eye that spent the night standing on guard in the cause of Allah So th there, is, there is a huge wisdom behind everything and God knows when, when God is telling you do something it's for your benefit So let's try and take at least um, if you want to regulate your sleep time so let's try and take at least one hour of sleep maybe before midnight depending on when taraweeh is done let's say 11 so you have 11 12 1 2 uh maybe 3 depends manage your time and then you can take a nap during your day before asr prayer if you can but try your best to avoid at all cost taking any naps either ramadan or not ramadan um after uh, Asr prayer because that will bring you uh, that will mess up your hormones basically it's not good for you and it will also play with your cortisol levels it's not very good so by that dividing and and looking at what uh, um, how you can manage your sleep you get some sleep at night and then you can make it up during the day if you can so try to manage to the best of your ability uh, this way your body should be able to have the rest it needs okay and the best time to take a nap is uh, from Duhur or when when the, the time the, starts? Uh, the best time to take a nap is never take a nap right after Fajr prayer, never. And never take a nap after Asr prayer. That's the rule. Mm -hmm. And naps should be should not last uh, longer than 30 minutes. But in the case of Ramadan, okay, you can take an hour, it's fine. <laughs> and SubhanAllah, yeah. it's all... Uh, like uh, the same advices from the Prophet uh, yeah. Subhanallah. Uh, yeah. What other advices uh, can you give about fasting Ramadan? Uh, okay, so um, let's look at uh, brain health and or mental health and fasting. So the brain has one billion nervous cells, and research uh, found that the the best two things to keep those cells healthy and prevent Alzheimer's is um, exercise and fasting. We lose on average 40,000 cells from our brain and each one of those cells is able to receive 
100 message in a second. Our bodies are fascinating. So the two ways to uh, make sure that we keep those cells healthy is by fasting and physical activity because as we take less calories, the blood flow increases and the body has more stuff to do, not only stay in the digestive system. So when there is more blood flow, there's more nutrients, there's more sugar, more glucose going into the brain and the function is emphasized that way. Um, there is an experiment that was done on mice and they brought two groups of mice. The first group, they put them in a maze and they put enough food. The other group, they put them in a maze and they did not put enough food. So the group that had enough food, they just stayed there. They were happy. They did not even man uh, try to get out of the maze. The other group who did not have uh, enough food, they were actually out of the maze within 15 minutes because um, there is a, a theory that is called the danger theory. So when your body is feeling in danger, it needs to do something to work, to survive, to save itself. And this is very important for us to look at with the way we spoil our kids, <laughs> we spoil ourselves, or even the way we deal with elderly, of course, old respect to them, but we need to help them move around. Living a luxurious or a too comfortable lifestyle is not good for us. So get moving, serve yourself, get your kids to do the chores, uh, get your um, elderly to move around, take them for a walk, um, even praying. Praying is very important. When we do sujood, all of that blood flow going down, it will support those cells. Um, so everything we do is, is just just make sure you follow the right stuff that they just follow what your religion is telling you to do. Um, Ramadan is supposed to be a, a month of productivity. Um, it's supposed to be increasing, not decreasing. Um, if it's decreasing, watch out your habits. Another thing I want to share is about fasting and immunity. Um, all research will tell you fat cells hold all the junk and the toxins and, when, and will, it, it will hurt your body. And the less calories, again, that you are, um, that are going inside your body, your white blood cells are more active. Your lymphatic system is also more active and when that happens the body is also able to renew and defend uh, itself and it's able to get better at cleaning toxins and it's also uh, it's also a good cure against what is called autoimmune disease so fasting is very fascinating um, if physical activity is present with fasting it improves the immune function as well and the function of other circulatory system in general to help get rid of uh, toxins faster. So, and it also help increase the release of the happy hormones to help the person feel more relaxed and so on. Um, like you said, sumu tasihu, fast and you will heal. And my final note, especially for my ladies, please do not, do not, do not shop during the month of Ramadan and when you are hungry because that's a disaster for your wallet because <laughs> if you're feeling hungry and it's very psychological you will end up buying things that you do not need so be very mm -hmm. wise and instead of shopping especially online maybe you can donate that money and you know you get more uh, rewards from God that way so um, any more yeah any more questions for fasting no, you covered everything, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for your time. Jazakallah khair. Allahumma balagna Ramadan. Uh, I mean, and may Allah accept so from all of us me. our fasting, our I mean. ibadat, our praying, and our donation, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, this is our last uh, episode uh, before Ramadan. During Ramadan, we will take a break and we will resume, inshallah, after Ramadan. Uh, that's everything for tonight. Jazakumullah khair. Have a good night and Ramadan Mubarak. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, guys. Uh, this is Hassan Wadi in one of the tents camps of Syria. I'm here with a baby. Uh, mashallah, he just quieted down. He's been crying for the past 20 minutes. This is his home. If you look, this is his bed. He does not have a baby crib. He just sleeps on here. And he was crying for 15, 20 minutes. I asked his parents, why, why is the baby crying? And the parents told me, we don't have, we don't have milk. We don't have nutrients. We don't have nothing to give the baby. We don't even have warmth. It's actually cold, guys. They don't even have diapers. Can you imagine a baby without diapers? Um, the baby is crying. I'm sure the baby needs something, but the parents are unable to provide the baby with their, with his, his or her needs, um, because they can't afford it. They can't afford it. They live in the camps. Look, look, look outside. This is the window. Look what you see. 
uh, this is this is the life they're living in, um, and um, they have no heater, they have no clothing, they have nothing. Guys, please support us. Subhanallah. As soon as I held this baby, <laughs> he's he's asleep now. Subhanallah. He was crying for 20 minutes, guys. I'm not even joking. He's in my hands right now, and he's he's so so calm. It's a beautiful thing, guys. He knows you guys are gonna help. He knows you guys are gonna come through. You guys never disappoint me. Please support, guys, for the sake of this beautiful baby. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.